MGM's From begins with Boyd Stevens walking down a small town's road. Its night is setting in. He's ringing a bell and alerting the town that curfew is almost here. Curfew isn't taken lightly in this town. That's because when nightfall comes, human-looking creatures come out of the woods looking for someone they can attack. If you're caught outside when nightfall comes, you're as good as dead. Because the creatures are some kind of demons with sharp claws and teeth. Nothing seems to affect them much. Bullets don't seem to hurt them, and they make quick work of any human they run into. The only safety the townspeople have is to stay in their homes and put a talisman on the door. If you do this, the creatures are unable to enter the home unless someone lets them in. If this town is so horrible, you say, why not leave? That's a good question. Why didn't I think of that? The problem is that anyone who enters the town is unable to leave. The road going in and out of the town just loops around endlessly, leading them back to the same town. They're trapped. Every person enters the town the same way. They were driving down a road, and a fallen tree blocks their path, making them turn around. Then a bunch of crows begin strangely circling the area. When they get back to their car, they arrive at the town. The most puzzling thing is that everyone entered the town from a different place in the world, so this town is some kind of purgatory. The latest group of people to arrive at the town are the Matthews family, consisting of Jim, Tabitha, and their two children, Ethan and Julie. Additionally, we have the tech giant Jade and his friend slash assistant, who lives for around two hours before Sarah Myers kills him at the town's infirmary. Sarah has been hearing voices telling her to do things and that if she does these things, the townspeople will be able to escape this place. No one knows if these voices are coming from the things in the woods or someone who is actually trying to help them. Personally, I would say, if a voice is telling you to kill somebody, it probably doesn't have your best interests at heart. Once Jade and the Matthews family make it back to town, they are told they can either stay in town, which is run by Boyd, or at the Colony House, which is run by Donna. The Colony House is a giant mansion which has probably about 20 people who live in it. This decision seems like a no-brainer to me. Living in the town is clearly the superior choice. Houses are smaller, which means there are fewer people who might get tricked into letting the monsters in. The monsters are able to trick people into letting them into the house, which is why the community has rules. You're supposed to nail your windows shut and make sure the children aren't at the windows at night, or else it could lead to disaster. Maybe I can come in? There you go! <laughs> You break these rules, you go into the box that Boyd constructed, and you left overnight for the monsters to attack. Before Boyd came to town, there were no talismans, because he found them in the woods when he got lost overnight. Prior to this, people in the town lived day to day, hiding in different places and hoping the creatures wouldn't find them, because there was nothing to keep the creatures out of a structure. There are other supernatural things that happen in this place, such as cows and chickens just showing up regularly, and the diner always being stocked with food. The radio signals seem to be blocked and are just static. Things like lamps aren't plugged into the wall and they seem to be getting electricity somehow, but nobody knows how. The electricity seems to be coming from somewhere way down deep in the earth. There seems to be a solitary electrical line which just runs into the concrete in the basement. Because of this, Tabitha begins to get obsessed with where the electrical line goes and she begins digging every moment she gets. Along the way, we are introduced to other pivotal characters, including Victor, who has been in the town longer than anyone. Victor has been in the town since he was a child and he's gotta be pushing 50 now. Victor doesn't seem to be working with a full deck, but honestly, who would be, after living the majority of your life trapped in a town where monsters come out every night to kill you? The monsters aren't the only danger here. Mental fatigue and being driven into depression or madness is a real thing. We also meet Fatima and Ellis. Fatima is Ellis' girlfriend. Ellis is Boyd's son, who has a long-standing grudge against his father for abandoning him and his mother when they arrived at this town. Ellis' mother was driven to madness and began shooting people in the town because she thought she was waking them up from a dream. It isn't too long before the voices tell Sarah she needs to kill someone else. They tell her she needs to kill Ethan. She attempts to do so, but she's stopped by the townspeople. We initially think that Sarah escaped into the woods following this incident, but we later learn that Father Katri has put her in his basement and is very interested in the voices she's been hearing. He drops some knowledge on Sarah, telling her there isn't a single copy of the Bible in this town gives her some more biblical trivia, explaining there are 73 books which comprise the Bible. He believes what's happening in the town might comprise book 74. The priest informs Boyd that he has Sarah in his basement, which Boyd isn't too happy about, because if you know the murder and the other attempted murder. Father Katri tells Boyd he believes Sarah and him need to go into the woods and find a way out of the town. Boyd has Parkinson's, which is setting in, so he doesn't have much time left to help the townspeople, so he agrees to take Sarah with him. Sarah is needed because she's able to speak with some kind of spirit, which they are hoping is trying to help them. This same night, some idiot named Kevin allows one of the creatures named Jasmine into the colony house. She's able to trick him into thinking she loves him. 
She obviously murders him, and this is why you don't trust a murderous ghoul. Once in the house, the monsters go on a killing spree. But many of the people are able to make it back to the town. The monsters, for some reason, always just menacingly walk towards people. They never run. You only get killed if you get cornered or surprised. Victor helps Julie out of the house and into the woods, and he puts her in a faraway tree, which sends her to a different location. Victor then follows a mysterious boy in white, who hasn't appeared in town for a long time, but has recently been appearing since Ethan Matthews was able to see him. The boy appears to be helping them. Father Katri is killed while helping people from the colony house into one of the buildings in town. After this, Boyd and Sarah go into the woods to hopefully find a way out of this place. While out in the woods, Sarah is hearing voices telling them they need to go back to town. One of the voices uses a nickname from Boyd's old days when he used to be called Mr. Fish and Loaves, which means the voice might be coming from his wife. Boyd and Sarah also see a giant light tower in the distance. At this time, a menacing storm descends on the town. The storm is getting rough, and Boyd and Sarah think they're going to die out there. But the boy in white appears, and he telepathically tells Sarah and Boyd to go into a faraway tree because they'll be safe there. Boyd goes in first, but we don't know if Sarah makes it in. Back in town, Jim and Jade develop an idea to build an antenna on top of the highest point in the area, which happens to be the colony house roof. They get an antenna up there, and they get power to it, and they begin using it, but a massive storm is coming in. Jim begins making mayday calls, and someone picks up. This person knows Jim by name somehow and they tell him that his wife shouldn't be digging that hole. After hearing this, Jim runs back to his wife at their home, but he's too late. Tabitha is digging a hole. She breaks through a hard surface and falls into a space which looks like a cave. Victor approaches her and tells her the boy in white said she would come. He says they need to leave this place because it isn't safe. Monsters sleep here. Season ends with a giant bus showing up at the diner. If you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.